All right, so yesterday we looked at external anatomy of the frog. Today we're going to look at the internal anatomy. When to open up the open up the body cavity of the frog, you're going to turn you're going to turn it so the ventral side is up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a cut from the cloaca all the way up midline to the base of the jaw. Then cut from the lower portion, cut from the lower portion of the forelimb across and then from the top portion of the hind limb to the midline and then across. This is going to allow you to peel back the skin layer. And that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna be aiming for. So these cuts that you're making with your scissors, okay, we're only wanting to cut through the skin tissue first. To cut through the abdominal, we're gonna follow the same pattern. We're gonna follow the same pattern. Here's where you're going to use your scalpel to make a slight, small incision to start it. Your scalpel, remember, is your least used tool. Use your scalpel to begin the incision, and then use your scissors cutting in an upward motion, following the same path through the muscle wall, being careful that because we, we don't want to damage the internal organs. When you open up the body cavity, if you have a female, the first thing you'll notice is all of the eggs. So if you have a female, if you have a female, you may need to remove some of those ovaries and eggs in order to see in order to see something in order to see some things otherwise. Uh, one of the other things that you'll notice, one of the other things that you'll see a lot of is these orange finger-like proje projections. Okay? These are the fat, these are fat bodies. And they're essentially big fat cells. So you're going to insert a probe into the glottis up in this area. This is where you're going to want to see that movement. If, you, if the glottis is large enough and you can find it and you can open it up, you might be able to open up and see a fold on either side, on either side, which would be the vocal cords that the frog uses for croaking. Tracing that down on top of the liver, which is this large black organ, Okay, are going to be two small sacs on either side of the midline. Here's one. The other one looks like it's hiding back over in here. Uh, these are the lungs. Make sure that you're able to trace the passage of air from the external nares into the lungs. Outside of the ovaries with the eggs, the most prominent organ, just like in the shark, is going to be that liver. Okay. The liver is going, the liver again is going to have three lobes. Liver again is going to have three lobes. The right lobe, the left anterior lobe, and the left posterior lobe. So there's no central lobe here. This lobe is on the left side and it's anterior. This lobe is on the left side and it's towards the back, so it's posterior. In this picture, we've removed the gallbladder, or we've removed the liver. Okay, don't remove the liver. However, you're going to look underneath the right lobe of the liver to find the gallbladder. Looking back up, again, this liver has been removed to help us see a little bit better, is the heart. Okay, the heart is covered by the peritoneum. So we're going to have to cut through the peritoneum in order to expose the heart, and we'll see the single ventricle, we'll see the single ventricle, the left atrium, and the right atrium. One of the things that we're going to want to take a look at is there's going to be three large veins that join together um, back up in this area. Okay, Here's one of them, here's another one. So one here, one here, and then the third one will be behind. This is going to be the sinus venosus. Okay. Um, the blood from the sinus venosus is going to enter into the right atrium. So you can see this blood vessel 
see this one tube coming in here, entering into the right atrium. You can see the second one in here, into the right atrium. Uh, to find the cornus arteriosus, it's a single, it's a single wide artery that leaves the ventricle and passes over the right atrium. If you follow the cornus arteriosus forward, it'll divide into three branches on each side. So when we take a look uh, underneath, underneath the liver, we're going to find the stomach. Underneath the liver, we're going to find the stomach. Uh, one of the things we're going to want to do here, too, is go back to the frog's mouth with the probe and insert the probe down into the esophagus. Insert the probe down into the esophagus, and we're going to want to see where that esophagus travels from the mouth into the stomach. When food passes in, okay, the opening between the esophagus and the stomach is called the cardiac sphincter. Food will then be digested into the stomach, and when it's ready, it will be passed out of the stomach through the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum of the small intestines. So again, we're going to want to be able to see, we're going to want to look at the esophagus. We'll want to see that one of, okay, we'll want to see it two ways. One, by going into the esophagus through the mouth. We are going to want to cut into the stomach. We are going to want to cut into the stomach so that we can see the rugae. And then once you've cut into the stomach, you may find some partially digested food. Insert the probe, insert your probe through both sphincters so that you can see where the, eso where the esophagus is from the, from the stomach. And then where the cardiac, or where the pyloric sphincter is between the stomach and the duodenum of the small intestines. So when we open up the stomach, here are those folds that we see. With the uh, with the rugae of the small of the stomach, these uh, again notice so we can trace here's our stomach into our first portion, into our first portion of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. From the duodenum, leads to the folded over region of the small intestine, which is called the ileum. So the ileum is what you would is what you see when that small intestine is folded all upon over itself. It's held together by a membrane called the mesentery. When you look at the mesentery that's holding together the folds of the small intestines, make sure that you notice the blood vessels. Those blood vessels are going to be what's responsible for transporting nutrients away from the intestines. So here's, again, here's the stomach. Here's the stomach. The straight portion of the small intestine would be down here, which would be the duodenum. And this is that ileum portion where you can start to see that it's folding over. And then here in this region would be where we would see uh, the mesentery. And again, mesentery is going to be between the different folds. From the small intestine, from the small intestine, we're going to find the large intestine. Okay? The large intestine down in here is called the cloaca. The cloaca is going to serve the same purpose as we saw in the shark. Um, it's going to lie beneath the pelvic bone. Um, and is the receptacle for the digestive system, the reproductive system, and the urinary system. Okay. Coming back in here, this is this finger-like projection okay, on top of the stomach, on top of the stomach, perhaps in the... Uh, located along in held with the mesentery of the small intestine is going to be your pancreas. It's a yellowish ribbon organ that's between the stomach and the small intestine. So you should be looking on top of the stomach, be looking on top of the stomach to see the pancreas. The spleen, the spleen is a small um, spherical object. Okay. It's brown because still the spleen is still responsible for holding blood. This is going to be in the mesentery of the small intestine. You'll see we lift it up. You'll see here we're lifting up the stomach. We're lifting up the stomach. Here's the mesentery holding together the ileum of the small intestine. So in there is where we're going to find our spleen. So there's your digestive and your respiratory uh, structures. 
we're also going to need the urogenital system. Looking at the urogenital system, along the back body wall, so okay, here's our spleen. This is a female. We can see our ovaries here. Okay. So here's our large intestine. Here's our large intestine and our cloaca. We can see we can see our kidney along the back body wall. They're long, narrow organs, again, along the back body wall. If we're looking at a male, if we're looking at a male, obviously no ovaries with eggs. The testes are going to be small, um, kidney bean shaped. They're yellowish or tan colored near the anterior ends of the kidney. So find the kidneys, trace them up, and you'll find the testes. Here's one. You can see the other one. You can see the other one down here. Um, there's going to be several small ducts. You may be able to see them. You may not. That are going to carry sperm into the kidney, and sperm is going to be exited um, through the kidney along with urine through the cloaca. Uh, another way to help find the testes is the fat bodies. Now, this isn't a very good picture of these fat bodies. These fat bodies are pro in your frogs are going to be big. They should be fairly yellow. But if you can trace them back to their origin, they're going to originate from the testes. Okay. So again, finding the kidney, finding the kidney along the back body wall, we'll be able to find the testes. Um, in a female, okay, again. We're, we're probably going to have to remove some of these ovaries. We're going to probably have to remove some of these ovaries in order to see some of, in, in order to see some of the stuff, especially along the back body wall. Um, this is what I'm expecting. This is what I'm expecting your fat bodies to look like, as opposed to as opposed to those um, dried out smaller ones in the previous slide. Um, again, in the female, in the female, we're going to see the kidney. We're going to see the kidney. Here we've removed the ovaries. Here we've removed the ovaries. However, there is this long, okay, it actually looks like a much smaller, small intestine. But these are the oviducts. They're going to connect, they're going to connect the ovary, they're going to connect the ovary with the eggs into um, the urinary bladder and eventually the out of the cloaca. You are going to have to find the urinary bladder in both males and females. It's going to be down. <clears throat> it's going to be down right, uh, right around the same place that you're going to find the cloaca. So here's the cloaca. Here's the cloaca, the large intestine, coming down. It's just going to be a small sac-like thing. And again, notice where we're looking. Here's the um, big muscles of our hind leg. So we're looking really down, right in that pel right in the pelvic region of the frog. If you get to it, if you get to it. You can uh, dissect the nervous system. You are going to be responsible for at least for identifying it. This uh, dissecting the nervous system is going to take is going to take um, a good amount of care and a good amount of skill. So uh, to do it, you're going to start scraping the skull of the frog. And notice where we're looking. Okay, so here's our eyes. Here's our eyes. Our thin phantom would be down here. So we're looking right in that top cranial region. Start scraping around, start scraping through, and then we're going to eventually act, we're going to have to cut through some we're going to have to cut through some bone. And when you cut through some bone, what you'll see you'll start to see this right up here and you notice it you notice it's going to start all the way up here at the external nares. And it'll travel back through the eyes, back to where the thymphanum is. So when we're starting, we start with the most anterior portion of the head. Okay, so this region up here, this is going to be what's most anteriorly. So basically, what we've done is, oops, sorry. What basically what we've done is we've taken this and we've pulled it out. So this region here, um, the olfact, there's going to be olfactory nerves that connect to the nares. So, and going to connect to this first portion, which is the olfactory lobe. 
just posterior to the olfactory lobe, two elongated bodies, two elongated bodies, one here, one here. Okay, this is the, cere uh, this is the cerebrum. This is where the, th this is the voluntary, this is the thinking portion of the brain. Okay, the cerebrum is part of the brain that helps the frog respond to its environment. Just posterior here is the optic lobes. Just posterior here is the optic lobes. Um, they look like little eyes. They look like little eyes. So this is the optic lobe. It's going to connect through optic nerves to the um, to the eye. Um, just behind it, okay. This region is the cerebellum. Controls uh, muscle muscle coordination, balance, and then posterior. This last region down here is the medulla oblongata, which will connect, which connects to the spinal cord of the of the frog.